Welcome to this special Easter episode of Flea Market Rescue. In this episode, we're going to take this mauve-looking tray and turn it into a beautiful Easter display. Next, you've been asking for it, so I created Easter labels and I'm going to show you what to do with them. After that, we're going to take this vintage silver pedestal dish and turn it into an unforgettable farmhouse Easter egg tree. Next, we'll take this little wagon that I got from the thrift store and turn it into a carrot wagon. So if you're ready for this week's episode of Flea Market Rescue, then let's dive into it. I had started this project a long time ago. If this used to be, I think, burgundy. I took it outside. I sprayed it with flat black enamel paint and this is how it sat for the last six months. So anyway, today we're going to use this and I got this awesome print at Sweet and Sassy Treasures. Okay, I am back at Sweet and Sassy Treasures and I'm going through all these. What do you call them? What'd you say? These are Monaghan Papers. Monaghan Papers. That's the one where I got the, the cute sheep. And look at all these. She has so many to choose from. I'm getting this one today. We are going to put this in here. I think it's going to look really cool. But first, we're going to spray this with some clear coat because that will ensure that we will have no bubbles when we place this down in here. So let's do that right now. We're going to take the this print here and we're going to take it outside. I'm going to just tape it to this pizza box that I cut and I'm just going to take a little bit of painter's tape to hold it down and then we'll go spray that outside. Okay, so it's kind of raining, sleeting, so I'm staying really close to the house here. So the clear coat has completely dried. We're just going to take this off here. Get rid of this box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around only where I see the, we're just going to cut the edge off, I should say. I don't want any of this white showing at all. Okay, so we have this all cut out, and now we're gonna use our Mod Podge to put it down. Now, remember, when you use a clear coat on the back, you don't have to worry about any bubbles, so that's why I did that. You know, I've done it without the clear coat, and I always get bubbles. It never lays down properly. So, at least with this, we'll be able to do that. I'm just using a piece of tin foil here, and I'm just gonna pour a little Mod Podge. It'll just be easier because I can't get my brush in there. All right, so we are just gonna start brushing this Mod Podge on the back. Oh, isn't that nice, a dog hair? Sorry, you guys. Okay. Okay, now that you have it all coated on back, we're gonna flip this over. And we're gonna place that right in side our tray. Kind of get that positioned where it's right in the middle. And then we're gonna smooth it down. Take your hand and just kind of smooth that all down. Now we got a little problem here because it looks like when I had it flipped over, that little bit of that Mod Podge kind of tore this off, but that's okay because it's just going to look vintage anyhow. Now you're going to want to put it also on top. I'm going to try smoothing that out. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this here. I have a little of this distressed ink, and we're just going to add a little on here. And now it's going to look like this. So I think that looks pretty darn good. So these are my new Easter hang tags. These two remind me of like books, something you'd see in a book. This one here could just go on a basket. It looks like fun for a kid. Um, this too could go on a basket. This one is for your more royal kind of rabbit. And this one is just stinking cute with a little duckling on there. It says, Easter blessings to you, little duckling. So I think for this project here, um, I think we're gonna pick this one here. So what you wanna do is just cut your hang tag out. And then I have a hole punch that I bought at the dollar store. You just take that and punch a hole in there. And then with a little piece of jute, you just wrap that through the hole. And voila. You have yourself a really cute hang tag. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our hang tag. If you want your stuff to look more high end and more finished, I always use a hang tag. I just think it looks so much better. I think people appreciate those little um, added touches. All right, you guys, you've been asking for the can labels. So I designed two really cool can labels, but first we need to get our cans all, you know, done. We're gonna take these labels off. We're gonna um, just like wash them up and then we'll go from there. So let's do that right now. All right, so we're just gonna start by taking these labels off here. All right, so our cans are dry now. We're gonna do one in this duck egg blue by Annie Sloan. And the other one we'll just do grubby like we normally do. So let's paint this one first and then we'll work on the grubby one after. So we're just using this duck egg blue. We're just gonna paint that all over the can. I'm having a hard time getting this big brush into a little can like that. So we're gonna let this dry here, and then we'll work on our grubby one. Now, if you remember, when we make these grubby like this, what we're basically doing is using the Mod Podge, and then we are cinnamon this to death. <laughs> so, get our Mod Podge out here again. Gonna pour a little on here because again it's hard to get it out with this big brush here but I want to use this big brush because it just covers 
so much faster. I mean, we could be done in no time. And if you know me, I don't have patience. Everyone says, oh my gosh, you are so sloppy. I am, but in the end, I tighten it all up. All right, so now with our cinnamon, this is just ground cinnamon. You're gonna take that, put it all over. And in spots that, you know, it just needs a little more Mod Podge, you can just easily just tap some on there. I like to go over this actually twice because it just makes it really nice and grubby. So this is pretty much really nice and grubby, but I'm going to put a little more Mod Podge over on top of this. going to kind of seal it in. All right, so we're going to let that dry and then we'll put our label on. Our cans are dry now. I just want to show you how nice and grubby here. See how cool. There are spots that you could, you know, put a little more on, but a label's going over those, so we'll be just fine. I have this one too, and we're gonna put a little dark wax on this one. So we're just gonna rub a little of this dark wax on. Okay, as you can see, it's nice and grubby, but we're just gonna add a little more of that blue on top. So we'll just add a little in. So we have like a multi-layer kind of effect to it. So I just want to show you how cool that looks. I don't know if you can see. And then this is super nice and grubby and we're going to add our labels. So I created these Easter labels to go on cans and we're just going to cut them out. I'm going to use my cutter because this is like the best cutter ever. This is, um, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. It is like so precise. I cut all my order, Etsy orders and everything. So it has a little wire in there. You just line it up. Cut across. Perfect cut every time. So we're just going to cut those out. Again, there's like a little wire in here. You just Place that where the end of your image is and slide it across. All right, so now we have both of our labels. We're gonna Mod Podge these labels on here.
So we're just going to add Mod Podge all to the back of our label. Get that all nice and saturated here. This one on the rusty can, the, the really grubby can. So look for your best side. Um, I'm thinking this is pretty good right here. And then just wrap it around. And then just, you can use a little more Mod Podge to seal that. And then use a little Mod Podge on top. So we're going to let this dry here and we'll work on the other one. All right, so we have this can that we did. I really love that. I think that's so beautiful. We're going to use this one here. So again, just like what we did. We're going to add some Mod Podge to the back here. Take this here, find your best side, whatever that one is. I kind of like this right here. And then we'll just wrap that around. And then you're going to want to put some right on top here. Love that. I'm gonna let this dry and we'll go from there. Our can is dry. It looks so super cute. Nice and grubby. Now I got this probably out of some kind of arrangement that I pulled out and I think it's gonna look really nice in our can so we'll just kind of put that in our can. And then I went to Hobby Lobby and they're having like, I don't know, I want to say 70% off or half off all their Easter stuff. So I picked up these little eggs. They're so stinking cute. We're going to put a few of those in there too. Okay. I finally got these open. And we'll just add a couple of these in there. I like these because they look so natural, sort of like our can, you know? No, we don't want no big ones. We'll just use the little ones. You know, we're just gonna go with three. I think three probably looks the best. Keep that out a little. I love that. I think it's cute. All right, now with this can here, we are gonna use some of this moss. You remember the moss from the that big wreath? Still using it. So we'll add some of this into the can.
like so. I have some of this like natural straw as well. We can add a little of that on top. And then we're gonna add a cute little bunny in there. I went to my mom's and took her little bunnies because she has the cutest little bunnies. This is a little salt and pepper shaker and we'll just add him right on top. Yes, we will. Let's just put a little more of this around the sides. See how cute? Love, love, love this. So this is what you can do with just a can and a label that cost hardly anything. Now I found this at the thrift store it was $1.99, and I thought this would be perfect to make like an Easter egg tree. I found this at Walmart, and we're just going to put that in there like so. We'll glue moss all over this, glue eggs, and then we'll top this off with a little ornament. So let's get started on this. We're gonna use that Wise Owl paint that I picked up. Pulling up to Motor City Paint. They have Wise Owl paint here and we're gonna get some. Paint that I picked up and it's called Bone. We're gonna use this on this. We're just gonna let that dry. After painting this bone color, we are gonna take a little sandpaper and we are gonna try to get some of that detail to come through. Okay, so we are gonna hot glue this in. We're gonna take these Easter eggs that we got at Hobby Lobby and we're gonna glue them all the way up. But first, we're gonna add a little of, you guessed it, some of this moss again. That moss really came in handy. So, you know, when you pick something apart, sometimes you can salvage it and use it on another project like we are. So we're just gonna add a little of this. I put a little glue. Trying to make it as thin as I can because we don't want the eggs sticking out, you know, like really far out. So we're just going to moss this all the way up. Okay, so even though that is not completely covered and we can still see some green, that's fine because we're gluing eggs right onto it. All right, so we're gonna start with the larger eggs on the bottom.
and we're gonna just work our way all the way up the top of here. Now I'm slowly starting to add in some smaller eggs as we gradually go to the top. But I'm also alternating a few bigger ones too, just so it doesn't look like, you know, wow, there's the large ones, here's the smaller ones on top. Then in spots that look like, hey, it needs an egg, but you don't wanna put a big egg, just use those smaller ones for fillers. I'm just working my way up, alternating big eggs with small eggs till we get to the top. All right, now that we have all our eggs glued on, look through there and if you see any open spots, like this one needs like a small egg just to fill it in. Anything that looks like it is missing something, add a small egg in there. And then we're gonna finish off like some bare spots. You know, if you see any bare spots, add a little more moss. We need a little more moss around the top. And then we're gonna top this off with something special. Okay, so because this is like a farmhouse kind of Easter, we're gonna add this on top. I think it'll be really cute right on top, but let me tell you a little story about where this came from. So my mom had a canister set and I broke it. I'm sorry, mom, love you. So I saved the topper here of the canister set and we're just gonna add it in because I think it's gonna look really cool on there. So to add this in, we are gonna take a little dowel rod and we're just gonna kind of put it right in the middle here. That will have something for that to hold on to. And then we're just gonna glue it in place. Okay, so I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm just gonna glue that in place. We're gonna glue that rod in there. And then we're also gonna put a whole bunch of glue on our little rooster here. And then we'll press down. Kinda of line that up in the middle the best you can. Whatever topper you use. I like to reuse things because I just think, why waste them? This was so beautiful and I feel so bad. Hey, maybe I'll give her this for Easter. Okay, so our little rooster is on there. But as you can see, we have a little bit of space here where we're gonna need to add some stuff in. So we'll get some more moss and we'll add that in there just to kind of fill up a little of the space. I don't know if we really should put another egg. No, I don't think we really need any more eggs. 
I think at this point, we're just gonna add a little moss around there. And like I said, just fill in those areas that need a little more moss. If you see that there's really a big void between eggs, you could add a little egg in there just to kind of fill up some space. There's my dog, the heavy breather. <laughs> Him and I stay up really late doing projects together. <laughs> he likes to hang out with me. Okay, you know what? It might need, this might need a little egg right here. I think we're, we might need to add one in there. We will. Looking at it, it just makes sense to do that. It's just easier to put the moss down first just because like try to get moss in between all this. It's okay to fill in a few spots, but if you have to do it all around all these eggs, it's just too much. Now, if you remember, I came across this at the Goodwill. It it was $3.99, and I thought, oh my gosh, this screams Easter, doesn't it? Now, I do not particularly like that it has this blue trim and it's blue right here. You know, I like that it's white, but we have to get rid of this blue and so I think we're just gonna need to paint it. So on this wagon, I wanna do a fun color here and this is called Fancy Farm Girl and it's by DIY Paint. So we're gonna paint this whole thing this color. I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna look awesome. So we're going to cut this dowel rod. It's a 3 8 inch dowel rod. We're going to cut that into five pieces. Now we're going to take this creative paper clay and we're going to make some carrots out of this and the dowel rods. You're going to take some of this paper clay and you're just going to smush it around the dowel rod and you're going to form it into a carrot shape. So you're just gonna keep smushing that on the dowel rod and you're gonna work your way up to the top of the dowel rod.
Once you get to the top of the dowel rod, now it's time to smooth it out. You're gonna get your hand wet with some water and then when you go over the paper clay, it'll really smooth it out. Now it's time to make an indention on the top part of the carrot where the greenery would come out. You can either put raffia in there, you can put some jute, um, whatever you wanna use for the greenery. Now just remember, you don't need to make this completely smooth, so don't go crazy trying to do that. Now we're gonna take our carrot, and I'm using an X-Acto knife. I know it doesn't look like one because I've used it so much. It has so much clay on it. But we're gonna make indentions in there. We're gonna make lines all the way through. I'm just going to finish up the rest of the carrots and we're going to let them all dry overnight. So our carrots are completely dry now. We let them dry overnight. We are going to start by painting them black. I'm just using this folk art black paint. You want to make sure you get in all these grooves here. All right, so these are now dry. We painted them all black. Now we're gonna use some of this um, burnt orange and we're gonna paint that. Now, do you see why we painted it black? While those carrots are drying, we are going to make a little sign for our cart. I bought this at the dollar store and they're like little chalkboard tags. So with some chalk, I'm just going to write out carrots for sale. And we're just going to tape it to our little cart. So I have a little packing tape here. We're just going to put that on the string and we're going to tie that on there. I think I'm going to roll some up and then put some behind there too, just so it stays in place. Now I have this jute that is green in color and I got that from Ace Hardware. So we're going to use some of this to make our little, um, greenery on the end of the carrot. So I'm just going to cut a few pieces of it. Enough that we can stuff into one side of that opening that we made. So I think that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and put this in here. We're gonna hot glue it in. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little glue right in here. 
and then we're going to start putting in I think we should be able to fit that other one in there. You want to at least get, you know, two of them in there. Now this jute is kind of curly because it's been in this roll for a while. I'm sure if you take a little water, it'll strain out a little. But actually, I mean, it's kind of cute like this. And then if it's way too long, just trim it. All right, so we have one done and we're just gonna do the rest here. We'll just keep on cutting them. I learned a lot of this stuff when I used to make dolls because you needed little accessory items to go with the dolls. Like if you were making bunnies, you needed carrots. So a lot of this stuff I learned through primitive doll making. That's why I say the little things, the little, you know, addition things that you can do, like hang tags, things like that. People really like all that additional stuff. It just makes your thing stand out. All right, so now that we have our carrots done, we painted our cart. We're gonna add in, you guessed it, some more of the moss. We're gonna add that in here. This might be it for the moss. I think we're gonna be done with it. So now we're just going to place our carrots into our cart. We could even leave one on the ground here if you want. And then I even have this little bunny that I got from my mom's house. Oh yeah, see? Put that in front. It's almost like, I don't know, it's like cement, but uh, ceramic. So that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how it looks in a display. I have so many Easter projects that I had to make a part two of this special Easter episode. So stay tuned for next week's part two. And guess who's going to be making a special appearance? You guessed it, my mom. She's going to give you a few ideas of how you can stage things for Easter. So make sure to tune in for part two of a special Easter episode. Also, the can labels and the Easter hang tags are now available in my Etsy store and on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, hop on over there. We'd love to have you. There's so many talented people over there, and every day they're posting new inspirational projects. And if you have a question or anything like that, it's just a really great group of people. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. I'll see you back next week. And if you like this episode and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.